Good day, Church Fellowship, and welcome to the LJCC update for Thursday, February the 25th. Boy, what a difference a week makes. Just a few short days ago, it seems, we were freezing and having worried about whether we could get warm. And, you know, I'm betting that a few of you even got a little hot and sweaty over the last two days. Rain's come. We're thankful for the earth to be replenished, but it just brings that humidity back. Nonetheless, again, as we've said a hundred times, if you don't like the weather, just wait a few hours, it'll change. We're in Texas. On Sunday, we reminded you that we're going to have some changes to our texting process. I said that you'd get a message in the early part of the week. We realized that we were going to be sending out a couple of extra messages this week, so I held on to it. And uh, you'll see the notification that you got for the update includes the opportunity to reply. So again, what we're trying to do is remind those of you who do not need the Sunday morning text to easily connect to either the Bible class and or the live worship service that you don't need that notification. And if you're in that category, you feel good about your ability to do it without that reminder, then we're going to get you to reply to the text that linked you to this update, get you to reply, no need. We're simply hoping to be able to reduce some weekly, monthly costs because of the texting. Uh, all of our texts cost us a little bit each text, and we're hoping to be able to reduce those costs, and this is a, a part of that process. Again, if you if you in any way are concerned that you might not be able to find the links without the reminder, we don't want you to reply. We want everybody to feel like they can get, get connected, to, particularly to the live worship service. Uh, but if you feel confident about not needing to do that, then you're going to reply, no need to the text that we sent you today. And then we'll get things set up based on that. Really continue to be thankful for, I've said this before, I want to say it again, your participation in our elder discernment and identification process. Um, we uh, had a change literally hours after the update last week was produced, and I told you that Sunday would be, that last Sunday would be the deadline for nominations, and the, the team and the elders uh, said that they wanted to push that out a week. You should have heard that on Sunday when David got up and made that announcement. But this week, this Sunday is the deadline. If you have any questions about how to get nomination forms in, uh, again, right over my shoulder here is where it is here at the church. But if you're not wanting to have to come up, uh, if you need a form and don't have one, there's a link on the home page. You can also go back to last Sunday's worship and uh, fast forward to kind of the after the sermon and Lord's Supper. David has a really good announcement letting you know what's going on. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to call us at the office. Uh, but we'll only be open till noon tomorrow if you want to get that message to us and we can maybe help you in that process. Our February mission emphasis has been Hope for Haiti's Children. It's been a blessing to hear the prayers and folks talking about it a little bit. Uh, incredible work in a very difficult place in the world. Um, you can go to their website, which you see right there on the screen, to learn more about it. But I want to particularly make you aware that this Sunday morning during Bible class, Roger Thompson's going to have a presentation for us. As I said on Sunday, there's been several changes in that ministry and our involvement in that ministry, and we want to bring you up to date on that. So either uh, come in person or tune in to the Zoom class and uh, be aware of, of what's going on with Hope for Haiti's children. Really thank you for the way you've supported our budget and able, so that we're enabled to do this kind of mission work. Uh, we got off to a great start last night with our new Wednesday night Kids for Class Bible classes. Uh, the music and more continues to be well uh, attended and, and they're having a great time together. Our, our younger age class, toddlers through five-year-olds, and our, our kindergartner through fourth grade class really had a, several kids involved there, a bunch. We had bigger response than we anticipated. We're really happy about that. Miss Joanne, of course, continues with the fifth and sixth grade girls. So yay, Kids for Christ, and yay to that ministry for getting those Wednesday night classes going. We would love to have you involved. Uh, again, there's always an adult class that's going on, so you can come up. It's not that you have to leave and just drop the kids off. We have things going on that you can be involved in. 
Be sure you're aware that this is the weekend that our youth are attending the Soul Link retreat, the, again, the day trip down to Palacios. I want to ask that you would be praying for good things to happen again this year with our young people. Uh, so I wanted to remind you of that one more time. Also, uh, we need to, I need to make you aware. Uh, we had a, the second of our uh, ministry potential and budget meetings with the ministry leaders and the deacons and the elders last night. And uh, as we continue to move forward with that, uh, Kevin mentioned it on Sunday. I just want to bring it up myself. This process has been a great blessing to us, uh, asking you to tell us where you want our spending to be. Uh, again, our spending, while of course, is never the limit of, of, our budget, of our ability to do ministry in many ways. It does limit our ability to do ministry in some other ways. And right now, you simply need to be aware, wanting to appeal to you directly, that we're about $1,000 a week, a week, not a month, a week, behind where our giving was last year. I mentioned our ability to do mission work in Haiti. In addition to Haiti, our mission work in the Dominican Republic, in Singapore and China, in Indonesia, and in, um, and in Brazil are dependent on your giving. Not to mention things like VBS and children's ministry things that we want to go on. All of those things are dependent on your support. So really asking you to think about where your giving is. Again, is it at the level that, that you feel good about in wanting to support the ministries that go on here? I uh, also want to be sure that you're very uh, conscientious about getting those gifts to us over the next five Sundays. It's very easy for us to go on vacation or do several things and not get those gifts in and then realize, oh, the process is over. Oh, wait, I still have. So we need those to come in. Again, you, you bless us in a great way with the way that you've supported our budget. Please don't hear me complaining about uh, your giving. Simply that, you, that we do everything we can do to make you aware of the status of our discernment project process at this point. You can always make your gifts here at church in the box here, get our Kids for Christ bucket there as well, uh, but lots of on online options that you can take advantage of. Just want to be sure that if you're wanting to give, uh, the ability to do that is very important over the next five Sundays. Let's turn to our prayer request. We've got, again, so much to be thankful for. We uh, just got word in just the last few days, kind of been interesting how it's happened so quickly, but uh, Jorge and Amanda Valise made us aware that they and the girls are wanting us to celebrate with them as he has gotten orders to be transferred to Ellington Field to work with active duty air reserve. And so the family has chosen, even though works pretty far that, to the east. He, they want to live here in Lake Jackson and continue, re, uh, get reconnected to this church family. We are so thankful for that. And, and I know Joe and Gabby are also really, really thankful about. Maria Vargas was here on Tuesday. I got to see her and first time I've had a face-to-face -face conversation or mass-to-mass -mass conversation with her in a long time. But again, we celebrate the great reports that she's gotten that she's cancer free. And she just, again, over and over can't say enough. Thank you for your prayers and her behalf over the last months and even years. Also, speaking of Joe McShann's family, he's been letting us know about the, his relatives, the files and others that we've been praying for over the last few months. And he wanted to report to me that everything's doing much better in all of those situations. We want to continue to lift up in our prayers some folks. Uh, Ronnie Mullins, we've been praying for a while, and his diagnosis has come back. He's, he's got an ulcer in his stomach, but also has some diverticulitis, and so he's got some adjustments that he's going to need to be making, and we want to pray that, uh, that, that things can be done to relieve him of the pain that he's having. Bob and Connie let us know that Connie had a fall during the storm last week and in the icy conditions. Uh, she broke her leg. There's some details there that I believe are in the caring and sharing, but at this point uh, they haven't, but they may be having to do surgery on that, so we want to be sure and lift up Connie Aubrey in our prayers. 
Also, Betty Stark sent us a note to let us know that she's continuing to have diagnostic, te diagnostic tests and has some doctor consultation for some leg issues, blood issues, uh, circulation issues that she's having, and we want to continue to remember her in our prayers. Sylvia Haro updated me that Israel Jimenez was back in the hospital for some further treatment, but he has now gotten into MD Anderson, and they're all thankful about that and feel really good about his care there. So let's continue to remember Israel in our prayers as he uh, struggles with Hodgkin's lymphoma. Edna Allen, Jamie Gay's aunt, uh, is going in for another round or going through another round of antibiotics as she deals with in infection in her legs caused by lymphedema, and they're asking for our prayers. Also, last week, Bernice Skinner went back in the hospital with some pneumonia and asked for our prayers. She was expecting to get out this week, but we haven't gotten word whether she's gotten out of the hospital yet or not. So let's lift up Bernice and, of course, Jack and the family in that process. I want to continue to pray for our neighbors who are in need of assistance as they recover from last week and the, the difficulties that that caused. If you're not aware, Disaster Assistance, Mike Baumgartner and Disaster Assistance is now doing some work in Texas, even in the Houston area. Uh, you can check his Facebook page, Disaster Assistance Church of Christ. Check his Facebook page for details on what's going on there. I want to continue to remind you to be praying for our country and President Biden in particular. And it's not about whether we agree or disagree with policies that are going on. God has called us to pray for our nation's leaders, the people who have governing authority over us. One last prayer request I want to mention to you. I want you to lift up Kevin McBrayer and his fiance, Alyssa Campbell. Uh, Alyssa's been here before, and it may be that you got to meet her there. Uh, their wedding is coming up on March the 21st in Charleston, South Carolina, but we're really excited to be sure that you know that there's going to be a couple's shower. That means the men and the women are invited. In many ways, this is going to almost be like the wedding reception that most of us will not be able to attend because it's in Charleston. So invite all the, all the men and the women to come be a part, meet uh, Alyssa, and most of you would know Kevin already, but uh, be sure and get acquainted with them as we celebrate. That'll be on uh, two Sundays from now, on March the 7th. It'll be here at the building at 2 p.m. I want to extend our condolences to the family of Pat Moss. Peter Hunt has had us praying for her. She's been on our prayer list. She is a 96-year-old friend of Lisa, Peter and Lisa's from when they were doing a little preaching job just outside of Searcy. Uh, they grew close to this family. A dear and precious person is his testimony about her. She passed away earlier this week, and Peter was called to come and be part of the service. So uh, I believe the service was yesterday on Wednesday, and I don't know whether they're back home yet or not, but he's traveling. Uh, they may still be traveling. We have some birthdays to celebrate. First of all, Mary Hancock's birthday on Tuesday, March the 2nd, and then Billy Yates on Wednesday, March the 3rd. But today is the biggest day of all this week, and we want to be sure that we celebrate with Haley Yates, Karen Phillips, and Lisa Chapa, all right here on February the 24th. Happy February the 25th. Happy birthday, Haley and Karen and Lisa. We have an anniversary coming up this week. Van and Pan Manning are celebrating their anniversary on Monday, March the 1st. Let's be sure and celebrate with them. I'd ask you to join me as we close out in a time of prayer. Our Father and our God, we are thankful for these folks that, that are your blessing in our life, and we celebrate with them and their birthdays. We thank you for the Mannings and the celebration of their anniversary, and again, the witness and testimony to your faithfulness uh, that their marriage and the years that they've been together are. We give you great thanks for the news that we've gotten about the Valises' return to Lake Jackson and George's transfer. Uh, we pray that all of those things will come together as smoothly as possible. Uh, we join with uh, Perry and 
Karen Stevens and, and, and thanking you the, for Austin's return from Iraq and again that he would get here to Lake Jackson as soon as possible. Pray for their time together. And we give you thanks. We thank you for Maria Vargas's healing and we uh, pray that you would continue to help her get stronger as the days move forward. Father, we are thankful for the files and others uh, of Joe McShann's family and relatives that are, are doing better. We, we, hold, we give you great thanks and praise. Father, we want to lift up these to you. We want to continue to remember Ronnie Mullins and Joanne Philo and Dave Newberry. We want to continue to remember Carlita Mulkey and Ralph Nocken. I want to ask that you'd get Bernice uh, strong enough to get home from the hospital, be with she and Jack as this process continues to move forward. We lift up Shirley Kimmerling. We lift up Josie Miller and Jason Fagan and April Lubke. We want to lift up Dee Rambo to you and Candy Crest and Meg Scott and Kelly McCoy. We want to lift up Israel Hernandez and Ron and Nora McDaniel. Father, we lift up Betty Stark and we pray for these test results to, to come in and give a clear path forward so that you can help her to continue to regain her strength. Father, we lift up Paula Roper and Nell Brown and Helen Cole. We want to lift up Chelsea Miller and Allie Wade and Edna Allen and Maggie Stroman. We lift up Carolyn Hunter and April Barton and William Hickel and Danny Bice to you. Father, we're thankful that as, as far as we know right now, we're, we're, we don't have folks directly connected to us that are struggling with COVID. And we thank you for, for, for that, uh, that, that condition of, of, of health. Father, we lift up in the midst of, of this continued pandemic, our healthcare workers, our teachers, our courageous, courageous teachers, our first responders. Father, we want to lift up uh, Kevin and Alyssa and their upcoming marriage. We pray for your blessing on them and uh, their preparations for their new life together. Father, we lift up baby Allie Kalen and baby Lane. Father, our hearts go out to the family of Pat Moss, but we thank you for a life well lived and a great testimony in everything that she does, has done. Father, we would pray that you'd give Peter and Lisa a safe journey home Give them the energy they need to, when they get home to get on with the, the things that, they are, that are next for them. Father, we do lift up our country. We lift up President Biden. Uh, we lift up those that he is nominating to work in his cabinet. We pray your blessings on them. Father, I want to pray your blessings on this church as we continue to undergo the process of, of looking for discerning and identifying men who we want to, to, to call and to put into the position of being elders who shepherd us. We also pray for the process of, of discerning uh, our ministry potential and our budget based on the giving of these next five weeks. Thank you for the incredible support that this congregation has given over the last year, but, but for many years. And we pray for uh, your clear vision of, of the ways that you want us to move forward with our finances here at this congregation. May everything we do uh, with our finances in, in all of our life be about glorifying you. May in this congregation we continue to be effective with the use of the dollars that are contributed to bring glory to you to build the kingdom in our place and time, to spread the gospel in everything that we do. I want to thank you for the source of that gospel, the gift of Jesus, that he would choose to give his life, that you would raise him from the dead as the first fruits of a new creation that we get to look forward to. Father, thank you for that gift. Thank you for Jesus. And we look forward to the day when he will return and make all things new. And we all pray. Amen. Thanks for joining me today. Again, uh, make plans to be at the Hope for, Haiti, uh, Hope for Haiti's Children update with Roger Thompson on Sunday during Bible class. And we'll see you for worship at 1030. Again, thanks for watching. 
Bye.